In this video, we are going to solve the problems of exercise 5.2 of NCRT textbook of mathematics class 12. Okay. So, here you see from question number 1 to question number 8, we need to differentiate, differentiate the functions with respect to x. Okay. So, let me show you one by one. So, the first one is sin of x square plus 5 sin of x square plus uh, plus 5 yes so here it is function of function sin is one function function of x square plus 5 it is also a function that is a polynomial function in that case how to uh, differentiate solution so our given function suppose it is y sin x square plus 5 so dy by dx so first differentiate uh, consider this one as sin x okay now considering this whole thing as only x then what will happen if you differentiate it it will be cos x that means instead of x there is x square plus 5 then you have to differentiate this function that means d d x of x square plus 5 and that is going to be equal to cos x square plus 5 and derivative of x square plus 5 is twice x and derivative of z 5 is 0 constant term so that is why it is only twice x. So, you can write the answer as this one twice x cos x square plus 5. So, this is our answer. So, similarly this is also a function of function number 2 cos of sin of x. So, in this case so let me show you the number 2 question number 2 solution. So, here y is equal to cos of sin x. So, first to differentiate it, we will assume this one as x. Okay. Then, dy by dx is going to be equal to and we know ddx of cos x is minus sin x. So, sin x instead of x there is sin x again and we have to differentiate this function as well derivative of again sin x and here you see let me derivative of sin x and this is minus sin of sin x and derivative of sin x is cos x. So, this is our answer. So, let me show you the next one also sin of a x plus b. So, it is similar to the first one. Okay. So, let me clear this part. Okay. Number 3 solution y is equal to sin of a x plus b. Okay. Sin of a x plus b. So, dy dx to differentiate it first you have to consider this whole thing as x okay so differentiation of sin x is cos x so instead of cos x there is a x plus b then you need to differentiate this interior part derivative of a x plus b and that's going to be equal to and derivative of a x is simply a and derivative of b b is constant here it will be zero so, so our result is a cos a x plus b. So, this is our result. So, now, now let me show you how to solve question number 4. So, here you see the given function solution of question number 4. So, y is equal to sec of 10 of root x. So, here you see it consists three functions one is sec another is 10 then root x itself one function so in order to differentiate it we have to consider this thing as x only that means as a whole we will assume this one as sec of x and we know derivative of sec x derivative of sec x is sec x 10 x therefore dy dx is equal to sec of instead of x there will be 10 of root x then 10 x 10 x means 10 of root x okay then we have to differentiate 
this function this function again 10 of root x okay now you see we know the derivative of 10 x is sec square x so this root x to be considered as x in order to differentiate this okay then we will get sec square x so our results become sec 10 root x 10 of 10 root x and it is sec square root x then again you have to differentiate this root x derivative of root x and we know derivative of root x derivative of root x is 1 by 2 root x so let us use this result here then you will get sec of 10 root x then 10 of 10 root x then sec square of root x then 1 by 2 root x so this is our result of question number 4 now let me show you how to solve question number 5 so how to solve question number 5 let me show this one so let me clear this so if you observe this uh, function question number 5 consider this one as u numerator as u and denominator as v now we know derivative of u by v is given by v derivative of u minus u derivative of v by v square so we will use this rule so solution number 5 so y is equal to sine of a x plus b by cos of c x plus d so assume this one as u and this one as b then its derivative is given by first v v is cos of c x plus d then derivative of u that is derivative of sin of a x plus b then minus u that means sin of a x plus b derivative of cos x here cos of c x plus d okay then derivative of uh, divided by v square that is cos square c x plus d now how to differentiate this so in order to differentiate this uh, first you have to assume this one as x then this whole function should be considered as sin x and we know derivative of sin x derivative of sin x is minus cos x sorry cos x not minus cos x cos x so that's why cos of c x plus d and derivative of this will be cos of a x plus b because derivative of sin x derivative of sin x is cos x isn't it then again you have to differentiate this term within the bracket function within the bracket and derivative of a x plus b will be definitely a only okay then minus uh, on the other part here you see if you observe this and uh, derivative of in order to find the derivative of cos of c x plus d assume cos uh, c x plus d as x so we will consider this one this whole thing as cos x and we know derivative of cos x derivative of cos x is minus sin x minus sin x then we can write here sin a x plus b minus sin instead of x there will be c x plus d then we have to differentiate this uh, function within the bracket c x plus d if you differentiate it you will get only c isn't it because derivative of c x is uh, x c is constant and as d is only constant no variable is there so it will be zero okay hope you have understood this then denominator is cos square c x plus d okay now these two negative signs product of this negative it will be positive again so therefore our result is cos of c x plus d 
sorry cos of a x plus b into a minus minus plus sin a x plus b sin c x plus d into c by cos square c x plus d so this is the result of question number five now let's move on to question number six so now let me show you how to solve question number six okay solution question number six so here the function is y cos of x cube sine square of x to the power five here you see first uh, let us consider this part as u and this part as b okay this part as u and here this part as b so here we are going to use product rule and u dot b its derivative is given by u derivative of b plus b derivative of u okay so if you use this then its derivative will be equal to first function that is u derivative of the second function that is b here sin square of x to the power 5 and plus b then b b is here sin square x to the power 5 and derivative of u that means derivative of cos x cube okay cos x cube you see here sin sorry not sin cos x cube now in order to find the derivative of this function so you have to assume this one as sine of x to the power 5 whole square so you can assume this one as x square and we know derivative of x square is nothing but twice x isn't it and x is here this one so we will get 2 sine of x to the power 5 okay then we have to differentiate the sine function again so let me show you here so uh, taking this one as x square we have got 2 sine of x to the power 5 then again you have to differentiate sine of x to the power 5 okay then plus sine square x to the power 5 and derivative of cos x cube you have to consider this one as cos x only first consider as cos x then it will give minus sin x that means here x cube instead of x okay then again you have to differentiate x cube then 2 cos x cube uh, here sin x to the power 5 and derivative of this function uh, assume this one as sin x then it will give cos x that means here cos x instead of x we have considered x to the power 5 here so then again you have to differentiate x to the power 5 again you have to differentiate x to the power 5 okay then here uh, this sign this negative and this is positive so it will be negative here sin square x to the power 5 sin x cube then derivative of x cube is trice x square okay so here uh, derivative of x to the power 5 is 5 x to the power 4 so if you multiply this term here then what you will get then you will get 10 x to the power 4 cos x cube sin of x to the power 5 and cos of x to the power 5 minus sin square x to the power 5 so let me write here 3 okay uh, with so let me write the trisex square term first then sin square x to the power 5 into sin x cube so here you see if you observe the 
uh, both parts of this expression here you can take x to the sin x to the power 5 sin of x to the power 5 common and you can take x square also common ok then what you will get x square sin of x to the power 5 if you take this common then what you will get uh, here you will get 10 x square from x to the power 4 if you take x square common then you will get x square isn't it so cos of x cube then cos of x to the power 5 minus thrice uh, here we have got sin square x to the power 5 so uh, on taking sin of x to the power 5 common we will get sin of x to the power 5 and then sin of x cube so this is our answer of question number 6 so let's move on to next question so now let me show you how to solve question number 7 so solution of question number 7 so here the given function is 2 of root cot of x square so here you see the function under root is a function of x so we can first let us assume this whole thing as root x so we will assume this one as 2 root x this function ok uh, then what will happen if you assume this one as root x and derivative of root x we know 1 by 2 root x so here 2 into 2 this one will be only root x ok root x so that means here dy dx we will get first 2 is there derivative of root x is 1 by 2 root x so 1 by 2 instead of uh, x there is cot x square cot of x square isn't it then again if you have to differentiate this function under root cot of x square cot of x square ok so now let me clear this so this is cot ok cot of x square ok now this two these two cancel 1 by under root cot of x square and derivative of cot x now assume this one as cot x ok now consider this x square as only x then what will happen derivative of cot x is minus cos x square x cos x square x so instead of x we have to put cos x square x square is not it so here it will be minus cos x square of x square then again you have to differentiate this x square derivative of x square and derivative of x square is simply twice x so we can write twice x uh, minus here minus twice x cos cos x square of x square by root over cot of x square so this is our result now let us solve question number 8 cot of root x uh, consider this root x as x then this function become cos of x ok and we know derivative of cos x derivative of cos x is minus sin x is not it so this x is nothing but root x so our result will be minus sin root x then again you have to differentiate root x ok so let me show you solution question number 8 y is equal to cos of cos of root x so dy dx that is going to be minus sin root x as again derivative of root x and we know derivative of root x is nothing but 1 by 2 root x so our result is going to be sin of root x by 2 root x so this is our result that's now question number 9 here it is given that prove that the function f is given by f of x mod of x minus 1 where x belongs to r is not differentiable is not differentiable at x is equal to 1 so we need to prove that this function given function f of x is equal to this one is not differentiable at this point x is equal to 1 
So, we know the f function suppose f of x to be differentiable at x is equal to f at a point x is equal to a. So, left hand derivative of this function must be equal to right hand derivative of this function at this point is not it and derivative of a function at a particular point is given by limit x tends to c the point is suppose x is equal to c then limit at uh, x tends to c f of x minus f of c by x minus c ok. So, here as we need to show that uh, it is not differentiable at this point. So, in this case we have to show left hand derivative at 1 is not equal to right hand derivative at 1 ok. So, now let us start. So, here the given function solution f of x is equal to mod of x minus 1. So, which also can be written as minus of x minus 1 if if x minus 1 is less than 0 ok if less than 0 or you can say x minus 1 less than 0 means x is less than 1 when x is less than 1 and it is positive x minus 1 if x is greater than or equal to 0 sorry x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0 that means it is x is equal to greater than uh, x greater than equal to 1 x minus 1 greater x minus 1 greater than equal to 0 means x greater than equal to 1 hope you have understood this. So, f of 1 it it will be what when x is equal to 1 then it definitely going to be equal to 0 is not it uh, 1 minus 1 that is going to be equal to 0. Now, left hand derivative left hand derivative at 1 will be given by limit x tends to 1 minus f of 1 sorry here let me write f of x not f of 1 f of x minus f of c means f of 1 here by x minus c means here x minus 1. So, limit x tends to 1 negative f of x uh, for left hand limit uh, we have to take this part for x uh, less than 1 that is minus of x minus 1 and minus f of 1 is 0 here x minus 1 which gives limit x tends to 1 negative minus x plus 1 by x minus 1 ok. Uh, sorry uh, let me write it properly uh, let us keep it uh, in this way ok. So, here you can see you can cancel this to x minus 1 x minus 1 then you will get limit of minus 1 when x tends to 1 negative. So, that is going to be equal to minus 1. So, left hand limit is minus 1. Now, let us find the right hand limit at f of 1. So, right hand sorry not limit right hand derivative at 1. So, limit x 1 positive f of x minus f of 1 by x minus 1 for positive uh, for right hand derivative at 1 we have to take uh, this value x minus 1 when x is greater than equal to 1. So, limit x tends to 1 positive x minus 1 minus f of 1 is 0 and x minus c, c is nothing but 1 here. So, this is going to be limit x minus 1 by x minus 1 when x tends to 1 positive. So, here x minus 1 x minus 1 cancel that is going to give you uh, limit of 1 when x tends to 1 positive that is going to be equal to plus 1. So, since as you can see here left hand limit a uh, left hand derivative 
at 1 is not equal to right hand derivative of this function are not equal ok therefore therefore f is not differentiable at x is equal to 1 hence proof that is how we can prove. So, hope you have understood this. Now, let me show you how to solve question number 10. Prove that the greatest integer function defined by this f of x greatest integer x where x is greater than 0 less than 3 is not differentiable. This function is not differentiable at x is equal to 1 and at x is equal to 2. So, hope you know the meaning of greatest integer function. Suppose, uh, if x is equal to 1 point something any value greater than 1 less than 2 in that case its value will be always equal to 1 so 1.5 uh, will be equal to 1. So, if you have suppose 2 point something 2.3 then its value will be 2 if you have 1.9 then it will be 1. So, I hope it is clear what is greatest integer function. So, now here you see solution let me write the given function first x is greater than 0 less than 3. So, at x is equal to 1 so function f of 1 its value is 1 ok. So, now let us find the left hand derivative of this function at 1 then it is given by limit h tends to 1 negative negative represents left hand derivative f of x minus f of 1 by x minus 1 ok. So, for left hand derivative let us put let us put x is equal to 1 minus h ok. So, for left hand derivative that means values less than 1. So, at this point. So, then what will happen if h tends to 0 here you see uh, if h is equal to 0 x will be equal to 0 is not it sorry 1 not 0 x will be equal to 1. So, we can write x tends to 1 as h tends to 0. So, that is why so that is why we can write this limit as limit sorry here it was supposed to be x ok. Now, we can write h tends to 1 negative not 1 negative when you write h tends to then it should be 0 because x tends to 1 as h tends to 0 that is why and f of 1 minus h minus f of 1 by if you write here 1 minus h minus 1 instead of x we have uh, put uh, 1 minus h ok. So, replace this x by 1 minus h and this one also by 1 minus h then what will happen. So, suppose 1 minus h suppose we have considered h is very small number ok. When you subtract very small number from 1 suppose we have uh, subtracted 0 0.1 from 1 then we will get 0 0.9 in that case greatest integer function will be 0 because 0 0.9 is uh, 0 0.9 is no, uh, not an integer ok. So, the possible greatest uh, integer which is close to this point is 0. So, that is why limit h tends to 0. So, f of 1 minus h is going to be equal to 0 mm -hmm. and f of 1 we got here that is 1 and here you see minus 1 plus 1 gone we have got minus 1 here. So, that is equal to limit h tends to 0 here we have got 1 by h ok. So, here you see this limit does not exist if you put here 0 it is going to be not defined it is it is going to be not defined is not it. So, let me clear this this is not defined or you can write infinity ok. Now, let us find a right hand limit ok let me scroll down please. So, uh, not a right hand limit right hand derivative of this function right hand derivative of this function at 1 then what we will get limit x tends to 1 positive f of x minus f of 1 by x minus 1. So, let us put x is equal to 
1 plus h 4 right hand limit as x tends to uh, here you see when x tends to 1 h tends to 0 ok. So, if you see h is equal to 0 then we can say uh, this, uh, this implies x is equal to 1 is not it. So, so now we can write this limit as limit h tends to 0 positive. So, I forgot to give here negative sign here to represent the left hand derivative. So, to right hand derivative uh, put here 0 positive. So, f of 1 plus h minus f of 1 then now replace this x by 1 plus h 1 plus h minus 1. So, here plus 1 minus 1 gone again. Now, you see 1 plus h suppose h is a very small number 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 something. So, when you have suppose 1.1 1.2. So, if you uh, put this value at uh, in the uh, if you if you replace the value of this greatest integer function if you replace x by these values then you will get again 1. So, for any value suppose this is if for x is equal to get x greater than equal to 1 and less than 2 for any value between 1 and 2 ok uh, this is uh, its result always going to be 1. So, remember that. So, here we have got uh, f of 1 plus h will be equal to then again 1. So, limit here it will be 1 minus f of 1 is also 1 ok f of 1 is also 1 divided by h when h tends to 0 positive. So, 1 minus 1 is 0. So, that is why uh, that is why this part will be 0. So, limit of 0 is 0 limit of 0 is 0. So, as you can see the left hand derivative and right hand derivative are not equal since since left hand derivative of this function at 1 and right hand derivative of this function at 1 are not equal these two are not equal therefore therefore f is not differentiable uh, not differentiable at x is equal to 1. Similarly, we can show similarly we can prove it is also not differentiable at x is equal to 2 ok. Now, let me show it at x is equal to 2. So, f of 2 will be equal to again 2 here left hand limit left hand derivative sorry left hand derivative of this function at x is equal to limit x tends to 2 minus f of x minus f of 1 sorry not 1 f of 2 by x minus 2 ok. For left hand derivative uh, let us use let us put x is equal to 2 minus h ok. So, so x tends to 2 as h tends to 0. If you put h is equal to 0, then x is going to be equal to 2, is not it? So, that is why as x uh, as uh, h tends to 0, x tends to 2. So, here we can replace the x by h uh, 2 plus h, then what will happen? Here limit h tends to 0 negative and f of x will become 2 plus h f of 2 plus h minus f of 2 by 2 plus h sorry here not 2 plus h 2 minus h I am done. We have considered x is equal to 2 minus h is not it. So, here it will be 2 minus h. So, it is equal to limit h tends to 0 negative. So, here you see uh, 2 minus h h is very small number may be 0 0.1 may be 0 0.2 if something is subtracted from 2. So, then you will get suppose 1.7 or 1.9. So, uh, so it is greatest integer function will be equal to 1 is not it. So, here we will get 1 minus f of 2 is equal to f of 2 is equal to 2 is not it. So, it will be 2 then here you see 
2 2 cancel we have got minus 6 here it is minus 6 so that's going to be limit uh, minus 1 by minus 6 h tends to 0 negative so here minus minus gone and if you uh, here you see it doesn't exist so it is also not defined okay so let's find a right hand limit so right hand derivative of this function at x is equal to 2 so limit x tends to 2 positive f of x minus f of 2 by x minus 2 so let us put x is equal to 2 positive for right hand side a uh, right hand derivative and x tends to 2 as h tends to 0 so let me scroll down this is going to be equal to limit h tends to 0 positive so x will be replaced by this x will be replaced by this value of x sorry not this one 2 plus h so 2 plus h minus f of 2 so here 2 plus h minus 2 so here uh, keep in mind one thing that 2 plus h it is greater than 2 and less than 3 so in that case the corresponding uh, value of corresponding greatest integer function will be 2 again okay so here it will be limit h tends to 0 positive 2 f of 2 is again 2 so uh, here this to cancel so we have got h so here limit 0 divided by h h tends to 0 positive so that's going to be equal to 0 so as you can see here uh, this uh, left hand derivative left hand derivative and right hand derivative these two are not equal one is infinity one is zero okay that's why here you can see since left hand derivative at x is equal to 2 is not equal to right hand derivative of this function at x is equal to are not equal hence function f is not defined sorry not defensible at x is equal to 2 hence proof that's how we can prove okay so hope you have understood this so if you have understood please hit the thumbs up button and uh, if you are new to my channel subscribe to the channel and share with your friends thank you for watching